you're gonna need to wear sunscreen and yes even if you have darker skin but there's a lot of sunscreens out there and not all of them are for us but there are a lot out there so keep watching for the best sunscreens for darker skin Okay, first, why do we need to wear sunscreen in the first place? Isn't our melanin enough to protect us from the sun? No. Even the deepest, darkest of skin has an SPF of maybe, maybe 12. And we know that that is not enough protection from the sun. Now, I feel that a lot of a sunscreen education is focused on burning and getting skin cancer. Now, while we can burn, because yours truly burn <laughs> on a beach in Barbados. I had sunscreen on, but my dumb behind fell asleep in the sun and ouch, right? And we know that we can get skin cancers, although we don't get them as much as our Caucasian counterparts. When we do get skin cancer, it tends to be further progressed because nobody's checking us for skin cancer and nobody's checking us for skin cancer because of racism. More emphasis needs to be put on UVA because UVA plus visible light can worsen pigmentation. And what is one of the main skincare issues for those of us with deeper skin? Say it with me now, hyperpigmentation. So what you want to wear sunscreen for, of course you wanna protect yourself from burning, of course you wanna prevent skin cancers, but what is probably more likely for us is dark spots, uh, melasma, discoloration, and you need sunscreen to protect yourself from that, as well as visible light. Visible light is coming from the sun. It's also coming from some of our devices, you know, that we have on all day. Probably the device that you're watching me on right now. Now, in general, there's like three types of sunscreens. There are mineral, there are chemical, and then there are combos, those that contain mineral and chemical UV filters, right? Now, when you hear the word chemical, it sounds so, like, dramatic. However, everything is a chemical, so even the mineral sunscreens contain chemicals in it. Our bodies are made of chemicals. They're chemicals just all up and through, right? So don't get all caught up in chemicals, right? So what's the difference between a chemical and a mineral sunscreen? So mineral sunscreens are going to use zinc oxide and or titanium dioxide to protect you from the sun. Now, when it comes to chemical sunscreens, some of the filters you're gonna see may include oxybenzone, avabenzone, octosalate, octocrylene. There are many, and if you go outside of the US, you're gonna see others like Tinosorb M, Tinosorb X, right? Now, when it comes to a combo sunscreen, you're going to see both mineral and chemical filters. Now, which one do you use? I personally prefer a chemical sunscreen. My skin is not very reactive, and chemical sunscreens for me are much easier to apply, no white cast, easy peasy, right? But my skin ain't indicative of your skin, right? So if you're someone with more sensitive skin, because some of the filters that are using chemical sunscreens can irritate people's skin, it can irritate the eyes, it, it can cause some issues for some people, right? So in that case, you may want to use a mineral sunscreen. Now, if you've ever tried a mineral sunscreen, you know that some of them can leave a really bad, ashy white cast on darker skin, which is why I have a series here on the channel where I try a lot of mineral sunscreens to show you what it looks like on deeper skin. I also try chemical sunscreens as well, but mineral sunscreens are a little bit harder to kind of find something that's gonna look good on your skin. Now, while you probably wanna find a mineral sunscreen that looks great on your skin, that's not the only thing that you need to look for, and we'll talk about that further into this video. Now, a combo sunscreen, basically a sunscreen that contains both mineral and chemical filters, can be the best of both worlds for some people because chemical sunscreens do tend to be a little bit more cosmetically elegant. It's a lot easier for them to be cosmetically elegant. And by that, I mean it looks good on your skin. But some people do enjoy having zinc in a formulation because zinc does have some healing properties, which may be beneficial for certain skin conditions such as acne. Now, that SPF number, 
Which one did you get? Did you get a 30? Is it 50? Should you get a 100? What does it all mean? Does it even matter? So basically, the SPF, sun protection factor, is measured by how long it takes for the skin to burn, right? Now, for some people, especially those of us with darker skin, it can take longer for us to actually burn. Um, and a lot of us are more concerned with UVA protection. Remember I told you the UVA, that's the rays that can worsen pigmentation and it also accelerates the signs of aging, like making you look older before your time. You know, there's nothing wrong with aging, but you know, slow it down. So that is why you also want to look for broad spectrum. Broad spectrum meaning that you're gonna get covered from UVA as well as UVB. Now typically, dermatologists will recommend an SPF 30 or higher. Now it is true that as you go from maybe a 30 to let's say an SPF of 60, that a 60 is not going to double the protection of the 30. The percentage is quite small. It's maybe less than like 4%, um, the difference between a 30 and a 60. However, because y'all are out here not applying enough sunscreen, some dermatologists will recommend a higher SPF because then if you half-ass a 60, you'll probably get a 30. But if you half-ass a 30, you're probably going to get somewhere like a 15 or an 18 or something like that. Water resistance does not mean waterproof. So if you're sweating profusely, like, you know, like how I am right now because I have to have the window closed and I can't turn the air on because it'll make too much noise. But, you know, I've got this fan that's supposed to be really quiet. However, if you're sweating, you go swimming, you get wet, you get stuck in a torrential rainstorm, you pass by, you know, a fire hydrant that's been opened in the street, you know, these things can happen. You want to, you know, towel off and then reapply your sunscreen immediately because your sunscreen can break down through the day. Um, things that can break down your sunscreen, your sweat, water, your tears, because sometimes life just be so hard. Oils, these are all things that can kind of break down your sunscreen throughout the day, which is why it's a good idea to reapply if you're going to be outdoors for extended periods of time. But what about tinted sunscreens? Now, there are some studies that show that iron oxides, which are pigments that you'll find in tinted sunscreens, as well as some of your complexion products like your foundation, your powder, your concealer, iron oxides do provide some protection against visible light. Remember I mentioned that visible light comes from the sun, but it also comes from our devices. That, and along with UVA, can worsen pigmentation. So you also want to look for some visible light protection, and you can find some of that in a tinted mineral sunscreen or with some antioxidants. Antioxidants can also help protect you from that daggone visible light, but you need to couple it with your sunscreen. Now, how do you figure out which sunscreen formulation is for you? So there's a couple of things that you need to keep into consideration. One, what's your skin type? Is it oily? Is it dry? Is it more balanced slash normal? These are things that you want to take into consideration. You also want to take into consideration the climate where you live, or maybe if you're a traveler, the climate of where you're going to be traveling to. Is it dry? Is it rainy? Is it really hot? Is it tropical? Is it really humid? Do you get four seasons? Do are there differences in the seasons? Like, is it really cold and dry in the winter, but hot and humid in the summer? These are things that are going to affect the type of sunscreen that you're gonna choose for your skin. Another thing to take into consideration, what's your major skin concern? Are you trying to get rid of dark spots? Do you have acne? Is your skin really sensitive? Do you have a skin condition like psoriasis or eczema or melasma? Like these are things that are going to factor into uh, the type of sunscreen that you're gonna use for your skin, but also your skincare routine in general. Also, what's your lifestyle like? Are you somebody who wears makeup pretty often? Are you in the office all day? Are you very active? Do you do a lot of outdoor activities? Is your lifestyle like maybe a mix of everything <laughs> that I just mentioned? What's your budget? How much are you looking to spend? These are all factors that are gonna influence the type of sunscreen formulation that you choose. Are you gonna need something with a high SPF and that's water resistant because maybe you go white water rafting? Are you gonna need something that's really, really lightweight and looks good with makeup because you know, you're a beauty queen and you want your makeup to last long. So these are all things that are going to factor into you know, sunscreen choice. Now listen up y'all, there is no such thing as the perfect sunscreen sunscreen, right? They're going to be, you, you got to make sacrifices here and there because, you know, it's just like, 
sometimes we can't have it all when it comes to formulation, right? So for me, my sacrifice is I just own different sunscreens for the different situations in my life. Now, I do own more sunscreens than a normal person should own, but that's because I review sunscreens as part of what I do for a living. Um, but for instance, today I put on the Sun Cut uh, UV Protect Milk. I think that's what it's called. I'll pop it up on the screen, uh, but I've reviewed it before. It's a very lightweight sunscreen that's great for oily skin, especially now that it's getting warmer here in New York. Um, and it works really great under makeup because I knew I'd be on camera. And after this, I'm going out to brunch. So I want to make sure that you know makeup is lasting. Um, however, when I go to the beach next weekend with some friends, I'm going to put on probably the Neutrogena Beach Defense SPF 70 um, and then I'm going to reapply probably with one of the Neutrogena Beach Defense or the Dry Mist Sprays um, or I could use like the Walgreens Sport SPF 70 slather that all over basically I'm looking for something with a higher SPF and um, that's water resistant and something that's easy for me to carry around because I'm going to need to reapply throughout the day when I'm at the beach but like I said, there's no perfect sunscreen. You also want to practice safe sun. So, you know, staying out of sun as much as possible between the hours of 10 and 2, staying in the shade as much as possible, wearing a big hat, wearing sun protective clothing, wearing an, um, wearing an umbrella, using an umbrella. Like these are things that you definitely want to do in addition to wearing sunscreen because, you know, sunscreen does have its limitations. It doesn't block out everything. Nothing is going to block out everything unless you you know, live in a fallout shelter deep down <laughs> underground. And what the fuck is that? You know what I mean? Now listen, now you take this information and you go check out my sunscreen reviews because I've done, uh, I've done so many reviews on sunscreens on darker skin, mineral, chemical, combo, you name it. Make sure you check out that playlist. And remember, the best sunscreen is going to be the one that looks good on your skin, you feel good in, that you're gonna wanna reapply, because that's, that's what really matters. Take care, be good to yourselves and others. Wait, did I just copy that from someone? <laughs> Either way, it sounds really good, doesn't it? Anyway, make sure you subscribe to this channel. We're a fun, loving skincare community. We love to help each other out. Uh, we focus a lot on, you know, getting that glow, getting rid of hyperpigmentation, using sunscreen, what kind of actives, this and, you know, things that pertain to skin of color. So I think you'd love it here, because I love it here. So make sure you join the channel by subscribing and turning that notification bell on. And I will see you fine folks in my next video. Bye guys.